He was also in Carousel. He was also in High Chaparral, if you watch that TV series, Ombre, and in My Favorite Year with Peter O'Toole. But by the time my late husband, Fred Mitchell, which you see was born, December 1st, 1946, right here in Los Angeles, California, passed away on October 17th, 1998. I had met one of God's great angels because I didn't want to date. I wanted to be a career woman. I wasn't going to get held up again, and I wasn't going to have some guy come in and tell me what I should wear, how I should be, and what I should be, and all of that. That was my mindset as a teenage girl in my early 20s. Well, let me tell you this. Here's the beauty. Men and women need each other. And you know what else is really cool about that? Men have perspectives that really rock. They really rock when they're on your team. And guess what? Women have perspectives that really rock when they're on your team. So... I went from this beautiful man in my life, can you advance please, to here, he died, left me and three children completely flat broke, he had cystic fibrosis, he had a heart double lung transplant at Stanford, and we talk about the medical, let me tell you something, it's right here in America, it's the best medical facilities in the entire universe, and pat our back, without my husband having a heart double lung transplant, he was what you call a domino. His heart was exceptionally healthy, overcompensating for two lungs that were burnt out. He was misdiagnosed at Cedars all his life. He was a surfer. They thought he had allergies and asthma. He had cystic fibrosis. When they cut the trachea at Stanford, they took my husband's healthy heart and they transplanted it into a 52-year-old woman. It's called a domino. My husband got a new heart and lungs. He lived eight more years. Mm. Yeah. Yeah because of the technology here. And by the way, Washington provided for all the transplant teams. My husband was essentially a guinea pig. He not only lived eight more years, but I got pregnant after that transplant. Whoa. And I had my little daughter, Jeannie, that you met earlier. So when I walked in, because he was working before he got sick, they fired him when he got sick. Because you can't have the president and CEO who's sick and weak. You know, men have to be so strong because as soon as you have an illness or anything, there's people who run and say, oh, he's weak now. We don't get it. As women, we don't get that. But we don't get a pity party all the time either. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He had to file a constructive dismissal suit because his company said, you're sick, you're weak, we can't have a president CEO like that. So now I had an unemployed husband. We had nothing. Now he died, my three children and I were broke again, I swear I'd never go transport myself back to that 16 year old girl that couldn't provide for her children. I said, uh-uh, I don't believe you want that from me, God. I got strength. And so I bought a bankrupt company that my husband had been working in, but the company spiraled down after his departure. <coughs> and within two and a half years, first I walked in and all the, all the shareholders pulled the plug and the lender who had a $33 million line of credit with that company, they pulled the line. And he said, you, little piece of fluff like you? I don't think so. So when I sat with the gentleman, guess what? We sat around the table. Because you got to know what you bring to the table. Get strong in your heart. Get strong in your body. Get real. It's your source. Always go to your source. Go to your source. Not this peripheral stuff. Your source. Your source. That's where you got to go. You know, you can it's gonna say, I'm not too worried about someone who can get centered by a babbling brook. Where I think the real essence is, is to get with someone who can get centered next to a babbling person. <laughs> and you people are doing real good with that right now. You're my teachers, and I love you for it. I love you for it. So, I had to walk in there. Well, this place was, guess what? A meatpacking plant. With, guess what? A slaughterhouse. A girl like me. I'm like, excuse me? I don't think so. There's somebody, somebody who's messing around here. Well, guess what? There were people who needed jobs. And guess what? There was a fine food product. I couldn't buy that food product. Not only was it overpriced, but it wasn't healthy. So I became, guess who? I look like her too. The wicked queen. <laughs> and you know why? Because I had to look at myself in a new light. And you know what I did? I said, I said like this. Damn, I look like her too. <laughs> 
is really scary. I want it to be Snow White. I used to be Snow White. What happened? My daughter said to me, Mommy, what are those lines between your nose and your mouth? I'm like, oh, honey, those are laugh lines. My husband had been dead. That place was so bankrupt. No one was giving us any money. The line of credit went. She goes, Mommy, but you're not laughing, and they're still there. I said, baby, we're going to do okay. We're going to do okay. And they said, what, is there anything Daddy would have us do? And I said, yes, there is. And they said, Mommy, then could we do it better than anyone's ever done it? And I said, yes, we can. I took my children to work with me. My mother died six months after my husband died. My children went to work with me. We made packages. We, we hired people who were like cosmopolitan and veterans. We made uniforms. And here's the end of my story. Within two and a half years from bankruptcy, we had that company at half a billion dollars in revenue. <laughs> Working together. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I said to the gentleman, you know who I am? He said, who? I said, I'm the ideal consumer. I am the woman you're target marketing. I am the lady who buys the groceries for her family. I am the woman who has to shop and take it home and make it at my dinner table. And guess what? I couldn't buy any of this food. The sodium count was too high. You people had it mispriced right out of the stratosphere. And that's how we did it. So I say to you, yeah, maybe the meek shall inherit the earth. But believe me, there will be those who contest the will. <laughs> yeah. So, don't wait for a greater later. Let's make a greater.